Hello and welcome to the Sands of Time Review channel. It is your host, Sammy Thunder. Um, back at it once again. Uh, this time I'm doing a kind of a newer segment to my uh, watch videos. And today I kind of wanted to talk to my audience about a specific brand. Um, and you can probably tell just by looking, it is uh, the Citizen brand. And I just wanted to go through an overview of this brand and kind of provide to my audience um, you know just to let them know that you know this is you know this is a brand uh that isn't just all about affordable affordable tool watches um and that you know I, I believe i truly believe that this brand is um you know it's kind of underrated amongst enthusiasts and you know when when there are enthusiasts out there that you know they're only aware of brands like you know citizen uh seiko uh for being you know very good value for money uh tool watches at the sub one thousand dollar mark and you know they don't really know much about uh what you know these two brands offer in terms of you know higher horology or higher watchmaking and i kind of wanted to give an overview of, of this and why i think the citizen brand is probably one of the most underrated brands uh out there and you know that's simply the fact that you know firstly it's um due to the fact that you know, with Citizen, much of their higher-end watchmaking is reserved specifically for the Japanese domestic market, um, and you know, not many enthusiasts really know about about those um, you know sub-brands, uh, subcategories within within Citizen. Um, the enthusiasts that probably do know a lot about Citizen are uh, probably familiar with, let's say, the Citizen Pro Master line or their radio uh, radio wave watches, um, and obviously citizen and seiko uh, a lot of people in general will know about these brands because these are wash brands you see at your typical department store or typical jewelry store uh, where you'll start to see seiko citizen casio loris you know your workhorse uh, quartz watches uh, or solar powered watches out there uh, for the general public um, but there is much more to citizen uh, and also seiko than there is um, and today I kind of wanted to specifically go through Citizen and not some of the other Japanese brands out there because I think I, I want to give Citizen a chance. Um, I want my audience to know about these watches which are just great value for money. Um, just amazing watches you can get. And I'm just going to go through two, line, two lines within the Citizen sub-brand that you know, is kind of reserved to the Japanese domestic market. The first one is uh, THE Citizen. And the second one is the Citizen Atessa line. Um, so I'll start off with the Citizen Atessa. And I think the best thing I can do is I've opened up a website called Sakura Watches, which I think is a great website to purchase Japan domestic model watches. Um, so I just wanted to go through this uh, website and just pick a watch really and just go through uh, what what this line offers. So what I've done is I've clicked on Citizen and I've gone into the Atessa sub-brand. And essentially what Atessa offers is a very good value for money watches that feature very high utility and great materials engineering. Um, most or even all of the Citizen Atessa line watches feature super hard uh, coating titanium. So titanium hard coating, um, which is just uh, great. And I just pulled up one watch in particular and I have to credit Armin Reviews actually for uh, doing a review of this watch because... Um, I, I thought it was a perfect example. Um, usually what Citizen Atessa offers is, you know, it can offer one of, let's say, a radio wave control movement, a GPS satellite uh, satellite wave control movement, um, or it's just, you know, your solar-powered quartz perpetual calendar kind, kind of movement out there. Um, but this example doesn't actually feature a perpetual calendar. What it does feature is the uh, date, uh, the month, the day and a moon phase, applied indices, luminescence, integrated sport watch, uh, integrated bracelet design, sorry, uh, that uses the um, titanium hard coating. I'm going to go through what I mean by this titanium hard coating later, but just keep in mind the Duratec word that's on the case back, and I'm going to go through this later. So for $571, you're getting all of this in functionality. Uh, a solar quartz movement so I mean you're not going to be doing anything to this watch 
in at least a few decades um, given you oh you still have the watch because you know it really is a timeless watch right um, it's it's something you're not going to service for f really in an ideal condition a few decades um, and the design is great especially with the integrated bracelet look and I highly urge people to look at the Armin Reviews channel for a detailed review of this watch uh, it is I absolutely love this watch and it features you know anti-reflective coating so you can easily you know see through uh, the crystal and there are watches at five thousand dollars that don't even feature you know the these basic utilities um so it, it's it's great to see that citizen offers a lot of let's say uh bang for the buck and this is an example that doesn't really feature let's say the um you know the perpetual calendar functionality um another watch within citizens at the atessa line is this uh satellite wave gps i'm going through a gps watch over a radio control watch because within australia a radio control watch is in the most part redundant because within australia i don't think there are any functional radio towers where your watch can actually sync to um i believe maybe in the northern parts of australia you sh you could be able to link to a, a nearby radio tower maybe in in japan look i don't know what i do know is that it, it is a redundant functional function because i have a uh, full metal G-Shock that also features a radio control movement uh, and it doesn't really sync uh, to anything in Australia but you know let's say I go traveling yes it, it'll work so I'm going through this GPS watch again um, it's just such great value for money for 1345 Australian dollars um, the comparable watch to this would be a Seiko Astron and they sell for at least two to three times the price the asking price of this on Sakura watches um, you're getting titanium with super hard coating, uh, which is just uh, great. You're getting anti-reflective coating, um, applied indices again, uh, luminescence, uh, GPS, uh, you know, GPS-based uh, movement, um, perpetual calendar. I mean, what can you not ask from this watch already? Um, based on the functionality it offers right now and this is just the Atessa line and I've just gone through two watches out of let's say 200 to 300 that are featured on this website that that'll probably you know uh, you, you'll find something you like within the Atessa line and these are sub $1,000 um, so if you're looking for that you know kind of like a one and done watch or a watch that you know that you want you care for the you know just the quartz watch with the high accuracy um and just the great great wearability with the titanium i mean the citizen of tesla line has got you covered and this is why i you know i appreciate uh, this brand why this is just one line that makes this watch uh makes this brand very underrated because not many people know about it um so that is the citizen of tesla line and i've just gone through two of the watches that i've seen now the next line in the watches within Citizen is called The Citizen. Now, I think I've said before that I'm not sure why they call it The Citizen, uh, but I'm I'm sure maybe in Japanese it sounds better. But what is Grand Seiko is to Seiko, it is The Citizen is to Citizen. So this is Citizen's big brother. Uh, you know, it's their, their pinnacle of watchmaking, right? And Citizen known for their quartz, uh, you know, watches, Eco Drive, they've taken it to the pinnacle using high accuracy quartz with an even greater tolerance in accuracy than your typical grand seiko 9f quartz movement not just that it's also solar powered so eco drive powered quartz movement not just that their quartz watches are uh, majority of them are titanium there are stainless steel versions majority titanium that feature again hard coding duratect so that's the word again and i'm going to go through this later you know, magnetic resistance everything's there um, these watches are produced in a similar manufacturing facility as Grand Seiko in a clean room state um, so you're not gonna see dust you know on the on the dial itself um, the you know these indices you know, I believe these are probably hand polished uh, you know to it's it's very similar manufacturing uh, processes that you would see let's say with Grand Seiko and you can see the complexity with the case and the bracelet design you can already see you have the you know beveled edges on the bracelet uh, on the links 
and you've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven link bracelet already. So there is quite a bit of complexity there. Uh, and you've got this nice sunburst style. And Grand Seiko, they've actually gone through the manufacturing process of their own sunburst style. And it's actually quite intense. So I'm assuming Citizen has that, uh, you know, process covered as well. Um, and, it, and it is probably intense. And I don't know if Citizen does the marketing well. Uh, I don't think they really market these watches. And that's why not many people know about them. But, you know, I love the capped seconds hand. The thick handset, brushed. And then you got that sea eagle or some people like to call it the chicken and not just that the quartz movement itself features a perpetual date function which you don't get with the grand seiko's 9f so with the grand seiko's 9f you're changing the battery every three years you're probably going to be changing the month every now and then i mean the date every now and then um whereas with the citizen you're not going to be doing that so in terms of let's say the functionality that the citizen provides uh, in terms of mm, the performance of the movement, I think the Citizen has you covered uh, on a much better basis than, let's say, you know, the Grand Seiko's 9F Quartz movements. And, you know, this is me speaking, someone that actually owns the 9F Quartz. And each each Grand Seiko and Citizen, they have their own ups and downs. So, you know, that is there as well. So there's more to, let's say, uh, liking a watch than just the, the performance of the movement as an example. And there are many watches within the Citizen um, as well, and they're kind of famous for using, let's say, a washi kind of paper dial. Uh, essentially, um, it allows the light to pass through. So it's like a translucent kind of uh, material which allows the light to pass through and the solar cells are able to charge, which is great to see. Um, and that is kind of what you get there with the Citizen. And I think this is just an example of uh, one of their textured paper dials which which look phenomenal and there are many watches out there from the from this brand but um it is quite difficult at times to get the one you might want because it might go out of stock or you know something may have happened discontinued etc but you know it's just such great value for money and the next within the citizen that i wanted to go through is actually you know the caliber 0100 and i've gone through this before in one of my watch express videos um, and there's a lot to this uh movement and I, which i've gone through so the actual um quartz crystal is shaped differently to compensate uh it's shaped uh shaped differently compared to the typical tuning uh fork um crystals that you have on majority of quartz watches uh, simply because it has a better tolerance to the temperature variation uh, gravitational variation so the position of the watch as you move it um, you know in different positions and and then also um, with the use of that quartz crystal it's um, it features uh, I'll just quickly <laughs> forgotten what what it is uh, aging so essentially what I meant by that is um, with this uh, crystal that they use um, as the quartz crystal ages uh, the the variation in the the frequency is very uh, minimal as it as the watch uh, as the crystal ages so that is you know something unique from the brand they've thought a lot there's a lot of R&D which goes into this stuff and you know the backlash mechanism for the seconds hand it's all gone through in this uh, very nice video so they kind of showcase that and you can see um, you know this is all manufactured in-house all you know everything's integrated circuit all, all the gear trains that they've used um, every single component with this uh, in this watch is actually tested and manufactured in-house um, you know it really is beautiful and this is just you know an example of uh, what citizen can offer at the highest of levels and you know they use very very um let's say high-end materials uh, to do this as well uh, especially through the use of um their duratec uh coating so this example here features duratec alpha and you probably would have seen with the other watches they feature duratec i just wanted to quickly go through what this means this here is a chart um, which I pulled out um, from one of the forums. It's probably referenced uh, 
to a reliable source and essentially uh, it's comparing the citizen codings to the Seiko codings. Obviously you don't see let's say brands like Zin or Damasco with their codings um, but with Seiko you have the bright titanium this is again a Japan domestic model uh, watches that use the brights material and then you have die shield coating which you see on many of the prospects divers um, and the die shield coating is able to provide you know in terms of Vickers hardness anywhere between 350 to 650 uh, Vickers essentially um, you know it's higher scratch resistance so Vickers as you can see basically the x-axis is your your Vickers uh, Vickers hardness uh, so as you go to the right hand side you know your scratch resistance is increasing for example Zin watches are anywhere between I think 1200 there are Zin watches which go up to 2000 in the Vickers hardness uh, rating um, and it also depends on you know whether they're doing a coating or the actual steel the entire steel case is um, uh, let's say treated um, so usually with a coating it could be anywhere between 7 to 30 to 40 microns it just depends on what the company does um, but for all intents and purposes we're just comparing the coating itself regardless of how much uh, of that coating is applied onto the surface so that's Seiko um, and this is what Citizen has so you have the Duratect already with Citizen's titanium watches at 600 bucks you're getting a minimum of 1000 Vickers hardness that is extremely scratch resistant especially you know and that's on titanium as well so they also do Duratect on stainless steel but the Citizen Atessa line watches that we're looking for were titanium they feature the Duratect coating anywhere between 1000 to 1200 which is just great what is Vickers um, it's kind of a hardness based on a testing process um, essentially you have your specimen that you're testing here and then you have this kind of uh, mold that you apply into a testing rig and it kind of you pretty much you you have a machine you apply a setting of force which is run for a specific amount of time and it leaves an indent onto this testing specimen um, so essentially that's done it's then you know analyzed uh, as you can see um, and essentially it measures the area that of the indent itself which is you know closely shaped to a diamond um, so essentially your Vickers hardness is your test force um, so kilogram a uh, kilogram force over the surface area of the indentation so it would be kilogram force over the uh, D squared the distance squared they're just assuming it's um even you would take the mean uh, but you know you can just calculate that area yourself but you know this isn't really a <laughs> science class but um, I just wanted to quickly go through you know the coding they used I just went through their super titanium and Duratect and then they have their diamond like carbon coatings etc but one watch we saw was the Citizen Caliber 010 which featured the Duratect Alpha this is featuring <laughs> a Vickers hardness between 2000 to 2500 just for context he stated that the sapphire crystal has a hardness of 2300 so your steel uh your titanium case is gonna be let's just say it's gonna be extremely scratch resistance and that's what you're getting with certain the citizen models but you're getting it with citizens very high-end uh models and it is you know something like this here so the case and bracelet feature this duratec alpha which is just phenomenal so the materials engineering uh, the engineering in the movement is just something to be appreciated and I know I don't really do a good job at actually explaining why this watch is amazing um, it's accurate to one second a year plus minus one second a year that is just phenomenal so this is one second a year uh, thermally compensated movement uh, they adjust for the backlash of the seconds hand um, they use their own grown and own uh, shaped crystals there's just so much uh, work that's gone into this watch and even the the watchmaking to on the dial is phenomenal and there's a great video which showcases the the amount of facets uh, on each of these indices it's just you know absolutely phenomenal and this actually is in terms if I had a three watch collection 
I will definitely have in my collection the Citizen Caliber 0100. And just for some context, they managed to do all of this with the Eco Drive having a power reserve of around six to eight months. Um, and that's like with one charge of the, you know, um, the solar cell being charged. So if you're wearing this watch, you have nothing to worry about, ideally. Um, and it has a power save function if it's just sitting there. It's super lightweight. This watch is going to be extremely lightweight, and I hope they have a... And they don't actually provide the uh, weight dimension, uh, sorry, the weight uh, measurement, but it's firstly, it's just going to be extremely light, uh, especially with the quartz movement that's you know displayed through a visual case back. Um, they also have a white gold variation, which is limited, and that obviously won't feature your, you know, much materials engineering with the case, uh, but more. You know, it has that classy appeal with the ivory dial, but Citizen are doing great work with this um, caliber of movement, and I, I, I really appreciate um, what they've done. It's just absolutely phenomenal uh, what they've done. And this is just an example of, you know, the level of finishing. Look at the indices. Look at the number of facets, and there's different levels of finishing that you see uh, on the indices itself. Uh, the case has, you know, multiple facets as well. I'd say it's simple, uh, but that's what's amazing about this watch. And you can see the curved second hand um, that, bal you know, that you have there so it can fit within the case. Um, this is kind of what I wanted to go through and why I think Citizen is, you know, a brand to be feared. A brand to be, you know, you should be happy to own a Citizen. And, and I think people should understand that you know, you should not be ashamed or anything that you spent, you know, more than $3,000 on a quartz watch. You know, there's no shame in that. You know, there are mechanical purists out there. To each their own. There is no shame to own a quartz watch. It's absolutely phenomenal, especially something like this. This here, as I stated, if I had a three watch collection, this watch has taken one spot. Guaranteed. The Citizen Caliber 0100 has taken the spot. Um, it's a watch I, I greatly appreciate. And I love this, you know, I, I really love this brand. And I'm probably going to be picking up a Citizen Atessa watch uh, down the line. Um, so, you know, I wanted to kind of just let people know that, you know, Citizen, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, I don't want to spend over a grand, you know. <laughs> Uh, on a, a Seiko, I've heard the saying of someone say that, you know, Grand Seiko, uh, example, I will not spend a grand on a Seiko. <laughs> you know, it's it's fine. Look, that's all good. Maybe you don't know much about what's offered here by these brands, especially Citizen. Uh, but, you know, just, just reconsider. Have a, have a look, have a read, try and understand, put some effort into understanding it, and you'll understand why. You know this brand is you know so wonderful you know i've seen a lot of negative videos about um citizen watches you know not just in the quartz watch making but even in mechanical because citizen own le jeu Paray and they actually manufactured their own movement the 0200 which they've used in an integrated sport watch and there are people out there that are just making videos why you should never spend x amount of money on a citizen and they've done absolutely no research. All they know is, you know, they put in a Le Jeu Pere, uh, and it's an integrated watch. They've not even held the watch in hand, and they're out there making judges. And look, fair enough, I'm doing the same with the Citizen Caliber 0100. Uh, but I have friends, and I've seen the Citizen, uh, the Citizen watches. I've seen this, this, the Atessa. I've, I've actually, you know, held it in hand i own a grand seiko quartz watch so you know i feel like i can comment on this after owning and experiencing some of these watches so let me know what your thoughts are on the brand citizen let me know and maybe we can have some nice discussions thanks for watching peace